Fine. So good afternoon, everyone, again. Um, and here we come to yet another topic in today's agenda. And as you may see, it's called the How Getting Answered Application of Agile for a Waterfall IT Infrastructure Program. Yet before we go to the topic, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. So my name is Greta Berzdelita. As mentioned in the morning, I do represent the exit technology. Um, I do hold um, uh, PSM1, CSPO, SAFE and CPM certificates, yet most importantly, next to my move from PMO to PM role, I did have a chance to work as a Scrum Master within an IT infrastructure program. And that's where we come um, to today's topic. So, Agile for IT infrastructure. Well, we are all well aware, correct me if I'm wrong, that Agile is most commonly associated with software development projects. That is a fact that works for it. I'm happy about it, yet many think that that's where its applicability stops. And also, it's an open secret that um, agile, not agile, sorry, that IT infrastructure projects usually come as a waterfall. Um, and some people truly believe that the terms agile and infrastructure are kind of Oxymoron, example of which you are currently able to see on the slide, or that at least uh, that's an odd couple. Yet my goal today is to get you acquainted with an actual story which proved that this so-called odd couple may be not odd at all. Um, we are going to do that in a couple of steps. So firstly, I'll introduce briefly some background information about the client, the contract, and the program as such. We'll afterwards go through the DXC solution in a couple of steps and we'll review the outcome. So what did we get out of it? Um, fine, so here we come to the case. Uh, well, first of all, I believe it's important to client that we are talking about, it's important to mention that uh, we are talking about the global client in the commercial aerospace, defense, and building industries. The program subject to presentation today is a server refresh and consolidation program for one of the regions within the global structure. It comes as a contractual obligation to refresh eligible servers on a continuous yearly basis. And contractual obligation here means that it's not only the baseline, but that it also is an extremely critical program which has a very high visibility from the client. Um, and as such, it has several goals, such as optimize server state, reduce cost of refresh and infrastructure operations, and also leverage the best of breed technology, ensure compliance and business continuity along the refresh cycle and transition to daily operations. Um, program as such was uh, in operation since the sign off of the contract, which as you may see here was in 2004. So it was going for quite many years, um, yet the management of it was questionable. There were quite many issues, um, such as obsolete tools, inefficient requirements collection, uh, and well, uh, there is kind of a correlation here, because um, due to the complex, complex requirements and the way how they were collected, well, that's basically was an Excel going through emails, so definitely that was quite insufficient use of time <laughs> and uh, no guarantee that you have the latest information if you're not following everything properly. Um, the number of client counterparts is very important here because as we're talking about um, many different sites and countries within the region, it means um, the number of cl client stakeholders was over one, 100. So the engagement of them has been really quite troubled. And at the end, this meant that there was all the complexity for the delivery organization and um, dissatisfaction on the client's end. Um, due to these issues being commonly um, understood, and here I mean both by delivery organization and by the client, um, the need for change came quite naturally. So it was around 2013 where um, Agile transformation was done and uh, the bilateral agreed goal was to find an efficient process and uh, 
flexible user-friendly tool to ensure visibility, flexibility, easy engagement of the client stakeholders. So how has this been done? Um, I am not going to say here that what has been proposed is a pure agile. It definitely is not. And it's not like even though I'm presenting Agile in IT infrastructure, I mean that Agile must go for IT infrastructure. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, it's like, well, you always need to evaluate and just think what could work for you. So that's what has been done here. And uh, it's rather a hybrid, waterfall Agile approach with both um, Kanban and Scrum elements in it at different layers of the management. So let's start from the Kanban. And here I think, well, it, um, I, well, that I should start most likely um, by providing some information on the scope. So each server refresh is defined as a project, a teeny tiny project. And, connect and collection of all of those um, is the program scope. Just to give you an understanding, it's kind of, well, um, we do define uh, annual quota for each year, and that comes as some kind of percentage of the physical billable assets um, which exist on the client sites. So that is uh, counted and defined, and afterwards that's how we define the annual scope of a program. Um, and all of those items um, to the scope do not only come with complex requirements from the client, but also with some predefined processes. And it was thought and afterwards agreed that the easiest way to get this managed would be to incorporate all of those uh, processes into one collection of steps, so basically the 18 steps Kanban. The, the first 14 steps stand for the uh, new server as it's a server refresh, so we are dedicated for the new server, and the last four steps come for the old server, for the commission of it. Um, yeah, so we would probably continue on the fact that um, when it, was, when it was thought how it, it would be easiest to do this, um, it was decided that it would be easiest by having a single um, entry for each server so that it could easily go through all of these steps. And here you may see like the first one, which is here uh, in yellow, um, is for requirements collection. And it has four stages in it. And the yellow color, he means that the um, that both parties basically are involved. So both DXC and the client, as you know, you collect the requirements, you review them, you validate them, you do the site assessment, and then you get the sign up. And afterwards, you can see the flow of the server through the refresh process. So the black means that the action is on DXC. Uh, blue means that action is on the client. Obviously, uh, we do have. Um, um, the ability to provide the client to have the access to the same single tool so everything happens in one system, we do use Jira. Client can come in a room, so let's say we collect the requirements, then server passes for steps like procurement, tracking, build, it gets to step seven where it's on the client, it's in blue, it's application load, we then go through the other steps like reviews and Aurora 1 and Aurora 2, and we get into completion of the um, activities needed for the new server. Then we come to step 15, where it's fully on the client because we wait for clients green light for the commission, and once it's provided, we go through with the commission activities. So generally speaking, it's quite obvious that we do have a, an extremely high visibility here, and uh, the work is quite simple, having in mind that everyone's working on the same system. And we do not need to, you know, um, have many tools with lots of communication as everything basically comes here. And as you may see, it's important point here, we have also set up the system so that automated email t um, notifications would be sent each time the status changes. Now, if we would move to the Scrum, uh, here again, I'd like to highlight that it's not a pure version of Scrum. It's rather uh, such a version which has been adapted to meet the needs and the goals of this precise program. 
So if we would take a look to how our Scrum team looks, we would see that, uh, well, we do have technical team and that consists of five engineers, four of them um, at the initial setup of a program and well, for this approach for the management of a program have been based in India and one ha has been and is still in Poland. As for the PO role, well, um, due to the very nature and extent of the scope, that's a shared role because we do have PMs and PGM in this program um, who are basically responsible for their own scope, uh, which is split based on the business units. So um, it's like kind of everyone having scope here is a PO for his precise scope and the requirements and everything related to that. And if we would take a look to the Scrum Master role, it's been decided to have this one as a rotating role so that each member of the PM team would have a chance to work as a Scrum Master and to see, you know, um, what benefits um, he or she can bring while working in this role and uh, just to have this experience. From the Scrum events, it has been decided to use the daily scrums to monitor progress and provide the team a chance to highlight the blockers, if any. And we do also have agreed to use two week sprints with uh, sprint review retrospectives at the end of them. I did miss to talk about the tasks here, and I think it's really important because, well, due to the predefined nature of the work which is about to be done under the server refresh, we have developed template tasks, and all of those are created by the um, project managers once servers are ready to be progressed and uh, to have some additional stuff to be done on them. And obviously, we do have Scrum board for visualization. Um, now, uh, the next point I would like to mention here is the usage of JIRA. It's quite obvious we have agreed to use JIRA for the general delivery, decision making, process tracking and so on. Yet um, we did also manage to use it for the other processes and goals which we see, which we have noticed as relevant for the management of this precise program. So first of all, it's dependency management. It's obvious that um, for, well, especially for infrastructure projects, there are quite a lot of dependencies. And um, previously, and, and here you, you see there is marked full move from Excel to Jira. So this basically correlates to the obsolete tools issue which was mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation. Um, and we have built it in a way that it's a project in which you can create dependency, link it to all the servers which are blocking um, that dependency project or which are blocked by that dependency project. And um, uh, there are different types of those. So uh, this way we have managed to enable ourselves to coordinate the server refresh program as such with out of scope projects to also be in a position to identify the opportunities for the out-of-scope projects and also to capture and track um, clients' internal dependencies. And this process starts from the very beginning from the requirements collection. Next item here is the change management. Um, well, again, due to the nature of the program um, and due to the fact that it's an annual program, so kind of at least the very initial plan is done even before the year starts, priorities may be changing. And in order to meet um, the client's needs and uh, to show that we are agile, <laughs> we needed to ensure that there is a flexibility, yet that flexibility must be a traceable one. So that's the reason why we have created the change management process, which again is fully and only in JIRA. We do have a change list and approval workflow with all the necessary approvals as defined by the corporation from DXDs and, and from the client uh, in a position to provide the approvals in the same system as well. And finally, uh, it's reporting. You may feel like these two points are kind of similar here, yet those are actually different. So we do use JIRA for reporting in two different ways. One is we use its abilities for reporting, like the Scrum Closure reports or the reports where um, PM uh, simply is in a position to configure anything he needs to see in what status their servers are or based on their type and so on. And, uh, and another way is that having in mind that this progr 
program was already running for quite many years when, when this approach was applied, um, we did need to meet some specific already predefined reporting requirements and especially having in mind that it's only for one region um, uh, among the global structures. So this means that there are other delivery teams which are managing same server refresh for other regions. So there must be some kind of compliance for all of them. The um, higher management would be in a position to compare the results. So we, we did have some predefined Excel reports which we needed to generate, yet we managed um, to make this simple by uh, setting up MySQL uh, connections and getting all the information to those Excels from Jira through MySQL with just a few simple clicks. Basically, that's it about Jira and the outcomes. So talking about the outcomes, I'd like to highlight three different layers of the outcomes here. So one is the delivery um, team, the delivery organization, and the last one, the client. So for the program team's level, I, I have no doubt in saying that this has really brought a simplified process, progress tracking and communication. The time has proven that we do have, as a result of that, we do have um, better lead times. And finally, um, I'm really happy to say that we have managed to create the culture of continuous improvement where each team member is empowered to highlight their potential improvement points. And I believe um, it, it's, it must be mentioned that having in mind that we have an international team and that we have, we are working as a virtual team, uh, you know, um, all of those who have done that uh, may know that it's quite a challenge. Because you know all of the all the cultures have a difference, and let's say if you're talking if you're working with India, it's it's quite a common sense that some more directiveness is needed, and that time is needed for the guys to you know to get them enlightened, and so that they could understand that it's actually not like we have to pick up something; it's rather that we can pick up something if we have time. So I'm really happy about seeing how communication goes now and um, how many improvements are actually coming from, from our technical team at this point in time. If we would take a look to the outcomes for the liberal organization, um, I must say that we got global recognition as the specific region stands out for its management among the others. And the other thing is the recognition of JIRA, because, and the, the, the proof of that, very simply speaking, is that um, account-wide checklist process, which is basically applicable for all the regions, has been migrated to JIRA. I believe that's quite a success, having in mind how many constraints and, uh, and obligations uh, corporations usually have and how many approvals do you need to get for such a move. Um, and finally, if we would go to the client outcomes, well, first of all, it's simple but extremely important, stable and predictable delivery, um, as well as increased visibility, flexibility, and transparency. And finally, all of this um, have well, all of this meant that we um, have been in a position to notice um, major increases in client survey results for communication and client relationship. Basically, um, that is it I wanted to share about this precise case today. Um, you may feel now like the way of how we have employed the different methods under Agile umbrella for this for the management of this precise program is questionable. And that's fine, feel free to do that. Yet <laughs> I truly believe that Agile is all about mindset and about values of simplicity, teamwork, short iterations, and feedback. And we definitely do have all of that. Um, at the end of the day, it's not about us working for Agile, it's about Agile working for us. So Agile is definitely working for us in this precise program and I wish you to evaluate and find the way of how to use at least some items from this um, mindset which would be beneficial for you. So thank you.